Hey guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC mom who loves science, and we're starting a new semester in cycle one today. So we're going to be talking about CC cycle one, week 13, hands-on science experiments. And this semester we'll be talking about earth science. So last semester we were talking about biology and the study of living things, and this semester we're going to talk about earth science and all about how what, what our earth is made of. So today we have two experiments, and we're, you will find those in your Van Cleves Experiments book. And it will be number 121, which is Tilt, and number 127, which is Sinkers. So I recommend starting with the Sinkers experiment first, just because it has to set for a few minutes. So that one is found on page 71, the Sinkers experiment. And for that one, you'll need a large clear jar with a lid about halfway full with water. You'll need some dirt. Um, I just gathered some dirt from my house. Some of this is potting soil. Some of it's just kind of some sandy dirt. And I also had just some purple play sand. Um, the first time I did this experiment when it was just dirt and paper clips, it was kind of hard to see a difference between the layers. So I'm going to add some colored sand um, to see if how that makes a difference. Um, I have five paper clips here and I recommend getting maybe some colorful ones just so you can see them better um, from the dirt. And then I also am going to try some of these like rocks, like these uh, decorative gem rocks. I'm going to put some of those in there too. So um, we're going to start with that one. So what we'll talk about as scientists, we're our scientific method again. Um, our scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, and conclusion. So some kind of questions we might have is we're going to be talking about the layers of the earth and how are the layers of the earth formed? And did we know that there were layers in the earth? Um, you know, there's soil, there's rock, there's minerals. So how... How do we know where to find those things? Like we have geologists and miners. How do they know where to go below the earth to find certain things? So that's kind of what this experiment is going to teach us. So we have our jar of water. And then um, ask the students, you know, what is their hypothesis when we pour the dirt and the paper clips and the rocks into the jar? What do they think is going to happen? Do they think certain things are going to sink or certain things are going to float? Um, kind of get their hypothesis what's going to happen. So I'm just going to pour some of this into the jar. That's probably good. And then I'll put, drop the paper clips in there. So if they can see, the paper clips fall to the bottom pretty fast. And then I'm going to put the rocks in. And then I'm going to put the lid on. And then I'm going to shake it up pretty good. <clears throat> and then we're going to let it sit for five minutes. So we'll do the ex other experiment and come back. So you can ask the students, what do you think is going to happen when we come back in five minutes? Do you think it's going to turn to mud? Do you think that certain things will settle down at the bottom? Do you think certain things will float? So that's mixed up pretty good. So I'm going to set that aside. And then we're going to move on to experiment 121, which is on page 68 in your Van Cleves book, which is Tilt. And for this experiment, we're going to be talking about why we have different seasons. And for this experiment, you'll need some pencils. And the Van Cleves experiment recommends like some clay. So I've tried some Play-Doh here. And I'm also going to demonstrate it with a um, styrofoam ball. Um, I've seen some videos where they, they put the ball of clay on the pencil. And if it's a really big ball of clay, it tends to, to like slide down the pencil. It didn't really stay there very well for the demonstration. It's kind of like that. So I think our campus is going to use some styrofoam balls. And I, I found like an eight pack at Hobby Lobby for pretty cheap and so um anyway that's kind of your and I used a marker 
to mark the equator around it. Um, the Van Cleef's says to use a pencil and kind of draw a um, equator in the middle there. And then I kind of marked where we live. And you'll need a small flashlight for this experiment. So, like I said, we're going to be talking about the season. So I found this pretty picture on, on just, I just Googled seasons and we're talking about, you know, see if they can name the seasons and kind of what the weather's like and why do we have different seasons? Why isn't it the same all the time? So, um, a verse that you could read is Genesis 1, 14. Um, and asked him, who made the sun, the moon, and the stars? You know, the sun is what give us light and warmth. So Genesis 1 14 says, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So God is the one who gave us seasons. So why do we have seasons? And we're going to demonstrate that. So you're going to take your pencil, either your ball of clay or your styrofoam ball and poke a pencil through it and you're going to mark the equator on it. So this is the northern hemisphere and this is the southern hemisphere. So one well, question you can ask is what does the earth look like as it orbits the sun? Does it is it straight up and down like this or is it sideways or is it kind of at an angle? And the answer is it's at an angle. It's actually at 23.5 degrees and which is about 130 on the clock. So, kind of like that. It's not a huge angle, but it's not perfectly straight up and down. And that is why our seasons change. So, we're going to tilt. You can either do it as a tutor demonstration first, and then maybe um, have the students pair up and try it together and see um, if they can duplicate it. But, so we're going to tilt it at an angle, and we're going to shine the flashlight um, pretty close. Well, this is maybe about six inches away and kind of rotate. So our sun, our earth spins, and that's why we have day and night. So the earth spins on its axis. And as you can see right now, the Southern hemisphere is getting the most direct sunlight. That means that it'll be warmer in the Southern hemisphere and colder in the Northern hemisphere. So this would be about winter time in the Northern hemisphere, like where we are right now. Now, the earth stays um, tilted the same way as it orbits around the earth. So if it is still at the same angle, my arms get kind of twisted. I'm going to switch real quick. But it's still tilted at the same angle, but now the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. And if you can see, it's probably too much. <clears throat> the northern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight and it'll be warmer in the northern hemisphere than the southern hemisphere so that's summertime in the northern hemisphere and then in between that is when you have your fall your fall and your spring so that's where kind of you get a little bit more a little bit less so it's it's kind of a cool demonstration to show how the sun's rays um, they're not always pointing at the same part of the earth directly. And that's because of the tilt of the earth. And another thing you can point out is at certain times of the year, there's spots on the North Pole that don't get any sunlight at all. The sun never rises. But maybe at the, nor at the South Pole, it never sets. So that's kind of a cool demonstration. So the tutor can demonstrate and the students can try it as well. So that is experiment uh, 121. And you can read um, this part in the, the, the Van Cleves, the why that has a pretty good explanation of what's going on too. <clears throat> so back to our jar, you can see we had some settling. Let's see if we can see any of the rocks or the and you kind of got some layers there. Looks like we've got some sand. I can see a paper clip. It's a little bit hard to see, but then there's some stuff floating up here. 
and that's probably like from my potting soil some of the plant matter so we've got some layers I probably could have added a little bit more dirt so you have a little bit more to see but I can't see too much of the paper clips I can kind of see one there and then I don't see the rocks but there's some kind of some cool layers there so we've got some layers um, that happened so most of the soil I'm gonna read from the Vinkley's most of the soil falls more slowly than the heavier paper clips so we've got layers of soil forming on top of the paper clips so in nature when it rains um, it kind of softens the earth and it it kind of shakes it and softens it and so there's kind of a settling the heavier objects as it rains the heavier um, minerals or rocks they kind of settle more towards the bottom layers of the earth's crust layers and um and then the heavy grains of metal they continue to sink until you reach the hard rock layer where they can't really go any farther um and it wants you to mention that the particles of metal that combine in this method where those metal grains go to the bottom to that where that rock layer is those are called placer or deposits. So that's some vocabulary that you can share. So we do have layers and it, it occurs because we have, it loosens and gets shifted in the earth's crust because of rain. And um, so it's kind of like how in our jar, we shook it up so the heavier stuff was able to fall to the bottom. So when talking about again, like how a miner, depending on what they're looking for, they have to go to a certain depth below the surface of the earth, because depending on what they're looking for, if they're looking for um, like these placer ore deposits, these these metal deposits, um, they're looking for for certain gems um, or certain minerals. That's where they have to go because those heavier things sink deeper into the earth. So you can list. Um, Nicole Liam has um, some good questions or just some good information about different minerals and things and layers that are um, in the earth's uh, crust and you can she has a, an example of kind of what some of these layers look like like if you were to dig a really deep hole you would see some layers or even like when you're driving down the highway and maybe they have kind of blasted away the sides of a hill so you're kind of driving through the hill you can look and see layers in the rock and in the dirt and the soil so there's places you could go in and see this happening so it's just kind of an observation that there are layers in the earth's crust and then so that is kind of how um, that demonstration will go for CC Cycle 1, Week 13, Hands-On Science Experiments. So I hope you guys have fun with this one, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.